Hello everybody, welcome to the video and welcome to all new time viewers and I just wanted to mention that if you haven't watched the part one, I recommend it because as I mentioned in that one, I split my script in half as I intended this review just to be a simple 10 to 12 minute video but it was getting to be quite long and I didn't know if people wanted a longer style video so as a result I've made two parts from the one script so I'll just be getting straight back to where we left off in the original one. So Toriyama continues to bring the heat in 05 with another great piece for a diorama figure set of all things and man I know I've said this a bit throughout the first part and I really have to say I love these colors especially for Goku where he still uses those bright orange and yellow tones and conveniently places him in the center so he is definitely the first one you'll look at but i do find it interesting seeing how looking at the kanzi barn illustrations he doesn't draw vegeta that differently at all and i like how he uses a lot of pen strokes for shading giving a bit of a manga feel to this one however nothing good lasts forever and this is where his work starts to become a bit hit and miss for me from this point on so basically in 2006 he does more work for volume 2 and 3 of the diorama figure set and I actually quite like Gohan here. He's a bit taller and Cell isn't a midget anymore like in the Kanzi Barn cover. But Trunks has me a little mixed. He seems to draw his legs thinner. Although the proportions and the bulk of his arms aren't too different to the old days. But yeah, I think he could have just used a bit of extra meat on the legs. That wouldn't have hurt. But below with Super Saiyan 3, I felt a little bit iffy when I first saw it. And I thought that his upper arm and bicep in general was looking a little short. But... When putting these two images side to side, the difference is even quite more noticeable. Super Saiyan 3 is personally one of my favorites, and it really just lacks that serious and cool look to the original with the more rounded jawline. And additionally, the Widow's Peak is also quite different looking, quite like Vegeta's actually. And now to 2009, we have flicked back to cell shading again. However, I'm not a massive fan of the thick line work without hardly any variation in width, and the colors themselves don't contrast that much. In this one in general the tones are a little dull but maybe he was going for a more polished look because these were for book covers but i really don't know and in regards to style with this one um definitely miss that serious and mature look to the characters now again i wouldn't outright say this is bad artwork it's just a drastic take on the characters i don't personally go for now in 2010 we had this one shot called kintoki which he drew himself because the last series he did Jaya was actually illustrated by another artist so he has returned back to doing the art and story himself and I gotta say the fight scenes like always flow great and have movement he still hasn't lost that magic touch to his work although one loss is that he doesn't do the line work traditionally anymore like Sandland so I do miss that raw gritty feel to his work and actually in general a lot of the characters regardless of digital or traditional don't have a lot of pen strokes for shading around the face and as a result can feel a little plain I really do miss those extra bit of details. And there also is a lot of variation with the line work. And finally, the art style itself. Just not my thing. Getting a little thin except for the man in the back who looks clinically obese. And is probably Ribrian's long lost brother, Ralph. But overall, I think the artwork is fine. I just don't like the art style as much as before. But I do actually quite like the cover for this chapter. The analogous color scheme he chose goes really well i particularly like that reddish brick tone for the rocks and overall i think it's a cool little scene as he is having his meal and sharing his food with these somewhat bizarre creatures and now back to dragon ball for this piece it seems he has gone for a style change again mainly with the super saiyan hair not being as large and that less refined look to the face like it isn't bad art but again i really do miss that more mature look we saw with Goku in later arcs and even in his work from 05 all the Kanzi Bun covers we saw previous that even though they did get a bit more rounded with the line work and that more mature look wasn't as strong he definitely didn't look this young and I think the same goes for my view on his work for Battle of the Gods in 2013 like it definitely isn't bad artwork and I actually love the vibrancy of the colors used but some of the takes on the characters like on Goku for example make him look really young, especially when compared to older work. The way Toriyama used to draw his eyes when he was in his base form was much different with his pupils, not as large and thicker eyebrows, and the general shape was different. Furthermore, later in the Kansi Barn covers, for example, you can see he goes with a similar style for the eyes, not always, but in this particular one he does. And even though the pupils aren't as large and the shape of the eye itself definitely wasn't as rounded, he still looks more older. 
But the biggest thing of all is that the proportion of his head isn't as large in proportion to his body like it is in the newer illustrations. Equally, he seems to go for this look with the rest of the characters with these quite large heads and having quite small and thin bodies, almost giving me a chibi vibe. Well, with exception of one or two characters like Ox King or King Kai, and perhaps it was a stylistic take Toriyama was doing just for this one piece, at least I wish, because Vegeta also gets the stick treatment. And with the character sheets, you still get the same proportions from before. And man, like these arms, right? The thing is, it might have come off like I have an obsession with characters looking like The Rock. But the truth is, I've never really gone for overly thin designs on any characters, especially for fighters. Like look at Tapion here. He isn't a hulking character, but he still has a bit of weight to him. And even compared to much earlier in the series, in the 23rd Tenkaichi Budokai, before Dragon Ball Z in the anime, those shoulders were much wider, and they were still quite bulk in comparison to even back then. And even in the GT sheets, you can see that their heads weren't as large in proportion to their body. But to be fair, in GT's case, for whatever reason, the characters seem to be placed in these groups, and some like Goku's group are closer so they can actually appear smaller. Then you have Krillin who is just like chucked in the back here. But yeah, even with Videl, like the legs aren't these small sticks, there is at least a bit of mass. Although it's not all doom and gloom, I actually like these cute little illustrations of Kid Goku, especially with the shield and the turtle kanji and the Chinese spear, possibly a long Quan, I don't know the exact name. And the contrast of the tones was quite nice and the line work was also good, especially in contrast to some of his previous stuff. And while we are in 2013, I think we should also look at the Jacko the Galactic Patrolman manga real quick. I'm not going to go too in depth, but the artwork is nice and clean. But more so, even though Toriyama's work is usually simple and easy to read without too much overcluttering, I think that he takes it even a step up again with this series because everything is just so neat and compact. And I really love the great balance of screen tones. For example, if you took out the tones and just had this as white, it would be easy to get lost in the background. But overall, he has really got a good balance and just helps draw your focus to the character without getting lost in the background. Although, if I'm honest, I still prefer his art style from Sandland in regards to the way he drew the face, etc. But I think compared to Kentoki, the line work is much better now with more variation. And he also shades out some areas with pen strokes, which adds a bit of grit in the art. And with the DB minus chapter, again, great artwork, just not a fan of the art style when compared to his older work. Again, doesn't mean it's bad. And I guess before I progress any further, I should brush over his Dragon Quest work of this newer era, starting with 2000 with Dragon Quest 7. Now, I'm not familiar with the Dragon Quest games, so forgive me for not pronouncing the names of these characters. And please realize that I'm only making a comment on the art that Toriyama has done, not the games themselves. But starting off with 7, I feel personally the composition and interest in these pieces was good, but nothing way out there that we hadn't seen before. Although some of the coloring with the airbrush can get a little basic and lack texture, so to say. But then again, this is something that is quite inconsistent, like this image done in 2016, or some of these images done from Dragon Quest IX back in 2009, also have a similar look where he has applied the airbrush not too well. So it could just be simply up to mood because the quality of his coloring for these games really varies quite randomly over the years. But originally at this time, it could have been that he was just still developing his digital coloring skills, but he had been doing it several years previous, for example, like with this cover of Tokimek from 1997, which I thought was actually quite well done. So I am a little mixed into this regard for the drop in quality in coloring. Although this piece here, I think is great. And I love the purple bounce lighting and the coloring is also of a high quality. And he actually uses a lot of pen strokes for shading reminded me a little of his manga art. So this one definitely stood out as one of the best he did for this release. As the tones on some, and to be fair, it could actually just be the scans for some of these, but they do appear a little dull. But overall, they are still quite fun pictures. But I think his work for the re-release of Dragon Quest V for the PS2 is evidence that Toriyama can still put out some top-notch artwork, which was used for the cover. The colors for one are great, very vibrant, but not too oversaturated and that deep purple goes so well. And having this guy in the background also going forward as the others are looking ahead looks really cool. He has also drawn the anatomy really well for this one in particular, and the guy in the background just feels really solid in general. And the clothing also has a bit of texture to it, it seems, which balances out the flat sort of a feel the airbrush can give. 
Although I couldn't nitpick that point with the spots, but that's a very small thing which I don't feel is that important. And to put it simply, you will see the same pattern emerge with his work for Dragon Quest. For example, the next game I think was also really good quality, nice vibrant colours bringing these scenes to life, and some great composition capturing that feel of adventure and tales to be had. The art quality of the character sheets is also there, but then when we get to Dragon Quest IX released in 2009, and the colour palette has a really drab feel. The line work isn't that great, just thick pen strokes without any variation, and this seems to go for character sheets and promo work. And although the quality of his colouring and line work has dropped, however the anatomy and how well the characters are drawn themselves are fine. Again, don't think I'm saying that the drawings themselves are bad, it's just mainly to do with a dip in quality with the colouring and line work. Although his Dragon Ball art also seemed to have a similar problem at this time. But then we get to Dragon Quest X released in 2015 and those drab colours are now gone and the line work is also better. The quality of colouring is also improved, however in this piece it certainly isn't. And then you get to Dragon Quest Builders from 2016 and we are back to a quality drop in the colouring and line work again. Then in Dragon Quest XI in 2017, we have that drab colour palette back from Dragon Quest IX for the cover of the Switch release. But then in this one, the colours and shading is much more appealing. So there is just this constant switch to do mainly with the shading, colours and line work throughout the Dragon Quest games of the 21st century. But still, when looking at his work from the past decade, the 2010s, it sounds weird to say that, a lot of his quality work I'm still comfortable with saying usually came from Dragon Quest. Now to finally get back to Dragon Ball in 2015, we have the resurrection of Frieza and we are back to cell shading and I feel like he has treated Gohan a little better in the designs. I actually think this one in the tracksuit is great. He might not look as cool as he once did, but I think it's still an improvement. But from front on, uh, not so much. And another positive about these character sheets, including Gohan as well, is that the large head and really small arms trend doesn't really seem to pop up for any of these characters. Krillin also has a bit of height now. And I know I said this before, but I do miss that more serious look Toriyama went for later in Dragon Ball. And I mean, even with this piece from 2005 and the Kanziban covers, even though they weren't as angular and chiseled with the face, and the characters themselves might not have been as buff, I still think it is a far better look than this in my opinion. But still, overall, I think it is a better direction, at least from the previous movie. And a lot of these points I just mentioned basically apply to the rest of his work for DBS. But finishing off with some of his later work for Dragon Ball Legends, surprisingly he gives a bit of bulk to Shallot and even the other character Zaha has a bit of weight to him. And it's just like before in regards to Tapion, I'm not asking every character to be shredded, just to have a bit more meat on them and not to look like this. Which was something Toriyama almost did for all characters no matter who they were, so I'm glad that is something that has returned. And then finally some more recent stuff with Jump Force, the quality looks fine, much like the style he does for Dragon Quest. Nothing way out there, but still good work nonetheless. And with his later piece of Bonyu, nothing again that we haven't really seen before. Not too much to analyse except that the line work is good and the tones are as well. Quite a nice, vibrant piece overall. And with that, I think we'll end it there. I hope you enjoyed this analysis overall. I try not to get too deep into all the pictures and there are still many pieces I didn't discuss. But as I said before, there is a massive amount of work out there and even though I tried not to get stuck on anything too long, the script would have turned out quite long if I didn't split it into two parts. But overall, analysis slash summary is that his Dragon Ball work in the early 2000s up to 2005 was of great quality, the line work was usually splendid, and especially when he was still doing it with pen and ink. The colours themselves were also quite good, and the shading, even though the airbrush can leave a nasty unnatural feel if pulled off wrong, for a lot of these pieces, I think he nailed it. And furthermore, also the style of the characters was a bit different again from what we had seen in the main series, but it still somewhat felt familiar and also fresh. Whereas later, and especially in the next decade, it kind of went a different direction, which I don't personally like. However, the quality of his artwork with video games was also hit and miss in both decades. Some delivered great composition with good application of tones and beautiful vibrant colours, while other times the quality dropped dramatically, and it's possibly either mood or fatigue that could be at play. Overcrowding could also take place in some of his Dragon Quest illustrations, but this could be a result of having to pack so many characters into one scene. But one aspect, and quite an important one, of anatomy, although for one or two pieces it may have looked off, but the majority of the time it was generally fine. 
So thank you for watching this video and especially for sticking around to the end and I will see you soon.